Hi everyone and welcome back. Today I would like to share with you my end of the summer book haul, which means all the books that I got during the months of July, June, July and August. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So the first book that I have to show you, I saw for the first time on Instagram. Ariel Bissett was talking about it in her Instagram stories and it is Motherhood by Sheila Hedy. Now this book immediately captured my interest because it deals with a topic that I'm very interested in reading about and it is motherhood, as you can guess from the title. Basically this book is kind of a mixture of a fiction and non-fiction because it should be from what I gathered the fictionalized version of the author's own life the main protagonist in this book is in a relationship and she should be a 30 something year old woman but she does not feel that internal clock that is telling her that it's time to become a mother and so this book is about how women are perceived in society how it is expected of them to bear children and how they are supposed to want to start a family where family means having children. And I know that I'm still very young and far away from the right age where I could be thinking about starting my own family, but at this time in my life, I don't want to become a mother or better, I might want to become a mother, but I don't want to give birth to a child. And I'm not sure how society would see that, how my family would see that. I don't know, but that is why I'm interested in reading this book and see how the author dealt with this topic. Next is a book that was long listed for the Man Booker Prize of 2018, but unfortunately it did not make the cut for the shortlist. And I say unfortunately because this is one of the few titles that I was actually interested in reading and checking out for myself, and it is From a Low and Quiet Sea by Donald Ryan. And in a way this is also connected to Ariel Bissett because she read not this book yet, I think, but a previous book from this author, Donald Ryan, and she adored his writing style. She highly praised his writing style. Obviously, having not read the book yet, I cannot tell you exactly what it is about, but I know that there are three main characters. It says here, a refugee, a dreamer, and a penitent, and they are going from Syria to a small town in Ireland, and their lives are somehow interconnected. I have a feeling that this is going to be a relevant book considering what's going on uh, nowadays with all the talks about immigrants and racism and the war in Syria. Yeah, I cannot wait to read this and see what it has in store for me. On a side note, these two covers, how gorgeous are they? I know that I'm shallow saying that, but honestly I don't care because these covers are freaking gorgeous and that's the end of it. The next two books uh, they were very random because I was checking my wish list on Amazon and I saw that they were on sale. They were like 50% off, if not more. I paid like 2 euros per each, which is basically nothing. Like, it's, it's two coffees for a book. So, you know, I could not not buy them. Postcards from No Man's Land by Iron Chambers. I have no idea what this book is about, but honestly, I don't care, because it's Iron Chambers and he is one of the few very talented YA authors that I still enjoy reading. It's probably just him and Patrick. Hey, buddy! Hi! Hi, buddy! Hi! Mwah. Stay here with me, will you? Of course you will! Of course you will! <laughs> Okay, so eight no 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 I'm with it. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, calm down. Calm down, buddy. Calm down. Okay. As I was saying, no clue about the plot, but I don't care because it's Iron Chambers. I know that it has something to do with World War II, but that's all I know. <laughs> and Charlie is really excited about this book, as you can see, just as excited as I am. <laughs> Okay, um, okay, it's enough, 
I love you, but it's enough. The other one is The Secret Home of a Daisy by Tracy Hulkster. Sorry for the glare, once again, and for my dog that walks in the background. If you move the camera, I'm going to get pissed off, okay? Mm, he's gonna hit the camera, whatever. This has been on my TBR for literally ages, and it is about a kid, a young girl, who loses her mother to cancer, and she has to move to another town in order to live with her grandmother. So it is about her grief and how she deals with the loss of her mother. I guess I'll definitely have to be in the right mood to read it. The book that I'm about to show you now is the one that I'm the most excited about in this whole haul and it is If Nobody Speaks of Remarkable Things by John McGregor. Now, Micho highly praised this book. She is a booktuber that I adore, so I will leave the link to her channel in the description down below so you guys can go and check her out because you should. The way she talked about this book, there was a spark in her eyes that absolutely convinced me to pick this book up as soon as I could. This story follows the lives of different characters who live in a quiet neighborhood in England England, and it does so during the course of one single day. And when I went on Amazon to purchase this book, I read the first paragraph and I fell in love with the writing style, with the music and with the rhythm of it. And I'm going to read it to you because you have to fall in love with it as well. This is how it begins. If you listen, you can hear it. The city, it sings. If you stand quietly at the foot of a garden, in the middle of a street, on the roof of a house, it's clearest at night when the sound cuts more sharply across the surface of things, when the song reaches out to a place inside you. It's a wordless song for the most, but it's a song all the same, and nobody hearing it could doubt what it sings. And the song sings the loudest when you pick out each note. It's mesmerizing and breathtaking, and I cannot wait to read it. And now, since this is my channel and I can do more or less whatever I want, I'm going to switch to Italian for a little while because I have to show you some books that I got in Italian. So, that's what's gonna happen. Ciao a tutti! Dunque, devo mostrarvi tre libri di cui due sono tascabili in Audi perché li ho presi a fine giugno per la promozione Acquista due tascabili in Audi e avrà in omaggio Il Telo Mare che quest'anno era uh, di Gita Alfaro di Virginia Woolf per cui non potevo non prendere Gita al faro di Virginia Woolf come potete vedere è in lettura avrei dovuto finirlo al mare ma così non è stato perché al contrario di tutti gli altri lettori di questo mondo io non riesco a leggere in spiaggia mi metto al sole faccio la lucertola mi viene la sonnolenza gli occhi mi si chiudono non riesco a concentrarmi non riesco a leggere è un mio limite ma che posso farci? Nulla purtroppo comunque lo sto adorando lo stile di Virginia Woolf è assolutamente meraviglioso, il mio problema purtroppo è stato proprio il fatto di aver frammentato tantissimo la lettura e trattandosi di un libro scritto con un flusso di coscienza ciò naturalmente non aiuta, il filo di questa storia non dovrebbe essere interrotto comunque dovrebbe essere interrotto il minor numero di volte possibile e non è ciò che ho fatto io quindi penso proprio che lo accantonerò momentaneamente per poi riprenderlo in futuro, forse la prossima estate ma posso con certezza affermare che per quel che mi riguarda Virginia Woolf è una scrittrice incredibile il modo in cui scorre, il modo in cui lei gioca con le parole, con i suoni con il ritmo è qualcosa di indescrivibile per cui non ho dubbi leggerò senz'altro altri libri di Virginia Woolf e l'altro libro che ho preso per la promozione in Audi è Notti in bianco, baci a colazione di Matteo Bussola ancora una volta sono abbastanza ignorante riguardo il contenuto di questo libro ma confesso che non voglio saperlo perché è molto breve dovrebbe essere un padre che parla della propria bambina o che parla alla propria bambina dovrebbe essere un libro veramente molto semplice il che non significa naturalmente che non sia un bel libro anzi ho la sensazione che sarà un bel libro e che mi piacerà ma proprio perché che si tratta di una storia semplice, penso che meno so più sarà bella l'esperienza di uh, lettura. E questo tra l'altro, spoiler alert, sarà uno dei libri che mi porterò a Milano, per cui sarà letto prossimamente. Ed infine l'ultimo libro di questo book haul che devo mostrarvi è in realtà una graphic novel, se di graphic novel si può parlare, e si tratta di Trattato di anatomia emozionale di Virginia Caldarella e Andrea Pennisi. Questo è 
un libro molto molto particolare e illustrato appunto ma non c'è una vera e propria storia è un trattato per questo non so se definirlo graphic novel o meno e si tratta di un insieme una raccolta di eh, modi di dire tra cui eh, pulce nell'orecchio lingua biforcuta ecco quello che stavo cercando testa tra le nuvole spero si veda qualcosa anche se la luce non è mia amica in questo momento ma quando mai lo è, prende questi modi di dire e li analizza, ne ricostruisce l'origine, li ricollega appunto al corpo umano, insomma è un libro veramente molto molto curioso e io sono molto curiosa di leggerlo e i disegni così come anche i titoli dei paragrafi, le scritte mi ricordano tantissimo eh, gli schizzi di quel genio di Leonardo da Vinci, della sua scrittura, insomma... Non lo so, mi piace tantissimo e non vedo l'ora di leggerlo e parlarvene. So, this is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. More than anything, I hope you enjoyed the mixture of languages that featured in this video. As always, if you have read any of these books or if there was anything in particular that caught your interest, please let me know in the comments because you guys know that I love talking to you. And this is it for today. I'll see you soon in another video. Warm hugs!